All right, party people. Typing Piper here. My laptop really makes my face glow. It's kind of pretty. That yeah, that's cool. I like it. I don't look as oily. I don't know. Ooh, let's adjust this, uh, shall we? Oh, hey Bourdain, what's going on? So, reflecting on the last year, and man, do uh, do certain things in life really like come out at you? So, Sunday. Was it Sunday? No. Saturday. Last Saturday. Hanging out with the in-laws, doing our second Christmas. I don't know, is that like a Hobbit thing? Second Christmas? <laughs> what about tensies and twosies? And <laughs> First breakfast and second breakfast. Second Christmas. And, um... My mother-in-law gets a phone call. Her brother, which should also be my wife's uncle, um, ended up in the hospital. Massive heart attack. Just turned 65. Just retired. Cats try to get in the room and it's really creepy. So... This is uh, not the first time I've heard of this, seen this. Um, guy worked all of his life. Small, um, tiny dude. Like, not a big guy. The cat's freaking me out. Don't turn me into a liar. <clears throat> Anyways. So, um, yeah. He ends up going in. Um, I don't know. It's, like, really hard to, like, piece things together from phone calls and people not really knowing what they're talking about. Not in a bad way, just like they're not familiar with like medical stuff. So it's like one minute we hear he's on life support, the next minute they're like, no, he's innovated. He's doing fine. He's just, he needed that because of other things going on. <sighs> Anyways, the whole point is, I know too many people who work long hours at jobs they don't really like for years on end. And then when they reach retirement, and um, yeah, this is far from the first person I've heard this happen to. So, um, of course, that gets you thinking about your own life. Do I want to be doing what I'm doing until I am too old to do it and... <laughs> frankly too old to do anything else and of course the easy answer is no so um, that is why as you know from my last video I bought this guy not my first laptop um, but Going back to doing what I was doing before and um, hopefully putting some stuff out and uh, getting back in the game here, putting out better material than I did in previous years and, um, you know, see where it takes me. So I made some mistakes in the past. I don't really want to cover those right now. I'm sure I'll talk about it later. But, uh, what I want to get right this time, 
Well, I've got some experience with podcasting, with uh, recording on Audacity. And, um, you know, for some writers, they make more money from their audiobooks than they do from ebooks and definitely published, like, printed books. Um, in self publishing, the Kindle ebook tends to be um, one of the top sellers, but. Uh, I think because of podcasting and, um, you know, people driving longer distances to go to work and stuff, they look for stuff like audiobooks. So, you know, that's definitely a growing market to tap into. And when I say words like market and, um, (laughs) basically using all these economic terms, I feel like a total douche. So, um, basically, I want to provide for my readers whatever it is they're looking for. And when my early stuff came out, there were people asking, Hey, is this available in audiobook? Because I don't have time to read. No? Sorry? And, um, I can't really say that anymore. So, that's something I'm changing this year. Let's take a look at this program, shall we? All right, so this is Scrivener. It is nothing like Microsoft Word, uh, as you can tell. There are a lot of cool features with this program. Um, I became very familiar with this in the last couple of years. I used it for my last couple of books, which I thought were better quality. Um, Definitely organized better. Um, editing, a lot of the, the final stuff does happen on Microsoft Word. However, the majority of the document is written on here. So, um, let me take you on a quick tour. So up here you can see this is the beginning stages of my... Next novel, Daisy. Yes, that is actually the name, and uh, I'll do a separate video on that later. So, on the left-hand side here, you can see... um, Let's see here... This menu. Alright, so we've got the manuscript, which goes into chapter, which you can break up into scenes, which um, all of this is really cool. You got characters here. Let me click on this and show you what happens. All right, so this is the cork board, and hmm. All right. Okay, so on this cork board, we would actually have different characters listed. Um. Oh man, let's see here. Template sheets, character sketch. That's really what I'm looking for. Okay. So, you can basically write out all of your characters. What role they play in the story, what they do for a living, how fit, fat they are, asshole, saint, habits, mannerisms. Anyways, there's a, this whole list of things that kind of you know, brings out who your character is for you while you're writing your story. And you can do this for everyone, major, minor characters, um, setting sketch, um, places that you want to write about. But that's, uh, that's not really, um... You know, honestly, I've only used these things a few times, and it wasn't even novel-related. It was for other projects. So, um, let's get back to here. So, basically, you would do your character sketch, and then you would transfer it onto here, and then you would have a cork board filled with index cards, and you can click on any of those characters' index cards and add, subtract, (laughs) subtract stuff. Uh, Same thing with places. What's also really cool is front matter. So you have your finished 
manuscript. So depending on how you export it, if you want it in a Word document or an ebook format, um, it'll change the front page of your manuscript. Um, pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. So let's look at paperback novel. Uh, here's your cork board, title page, your copyright information, who you want to dedicate it to. And let's look at title page. So yeah, you just fill it in and then it gets added to your final product. And later on I'll get a little more detailed on this because um, with chapters, basically this is the title or number of your chapter and then you have all the different scenes in it. And as your book grows, this whole thing will grow into chapter, you know, 15, 18, 22 with several scenes underneath those chapters. And what's... What's really interesting about that, you don't like this scene, well you can move it wherever in the story you want. And um, it's not like Word where you have to cut and paste um, in the document. So a heck of a lot easier to use when it comes to organizing different things. And... I believe this is the blackout feature. Yes. Blackout feature. This is the main reason I bought this program. Notice how the page is in the middle now. What this feature does is if your if your laptop's connected to the internet, so you're getting updates different programs are trying to tell you like, hey, look at this news article. Hey, we have an ad for you to look at because you're a consumer. Um, it shuts all that off. So, um, so anyways, when you're typing, what you're typing is always in the middle here and all the text moves up. It's one continuous page. It's very Jack Kerouac on a screen. Um, it doesn't tell you your word count. It it doesn't... Basically you can get lost in your story without distraction and keep going. And I think that is probably the most beneficial thing about this program. You don't have that with Word. Um, I can't think of any other programs besides Word now. So, anyways, um, I forget how to get out of this. Alright, so you press escape and uh, it goes back to this page. Um, so anyways, that's one of the uh, coolest features on this thing. There is also, I believe that, yeah, this is where... You take all of this stuff, title page, all of your manuscript, and then it gets compiled into a Word document or a ebook document of some kind. Um, something that you can work in another program on. So, um, and you don't it's not something you can use just once you can you can export multiple variations of your document so that is a really cool feature so anyways I bought this program a couple years ago thankfully I was able to use the old code to <laughs> get my program back and um, voila there it is so that is Scrivener 40 bucks, which isn't a hell of a lot for a program, and um, I think it's probably one of the best writing tools that's out there. I am not being paid for this commercial. So anyways, <sighs> 
that is what I'm going to be using. That is what I'm going to be dealing with. Um, another really cool feature I didn't mention is the word count. So basically you can set a goal as to how many words you're going to type up a day. And it will tell you where you're at um, after a writing session. Did you hit 800 words? Did you hit 3,000 words like you were thinking you were going to do? Um, so that's a good way to motivate yourself, keep track of where you're at. Um, you can also plug in how long you want your document to be. If you want to write a 100,000 word document, then um, don't keep track of where you're at on that. So um, pretty nifty tool. Um, honestly, it's it's really like one of the best pieces of equipment for writing any type of document. Um, I know Joe Rogan uses it. Several, I think, scientists use it for writing like their their papers for um, different journals and stuff. So um, it's very versatile. It's got nonfiction, fiction. Um, <laughs> types of fiction so it, it can just be like a normal novel or it could be a novel in sections so it's a program you can tick around with quite a bit and um, one I definitely enjoy using so anyways that's uh, where I'm at and um Hopefully my uh, wife's uncle recovers, but um, yeah, that's not the story I want to live, so hopefully I can change that, starting right now.